You gotta do it, Roy. <laughs> Just do it. You don't have to do this. You kinda do, though. For me. Do it for me. But you will do it, won't you, Mustang? <laughs> but what is he gonna lose when he does it? He's gonna give something up. Alright. Good. I knew you'd see reason. Alright, Lieutenant. I won't perform the transmutation. What? You'd forsake her. How very cold of you. Damn. I should have known they would go there. I mean, they're nothing if not committed. But come on, it's Riza. See, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this life. It would be a little bit different for me if like there wasn't still a chance after this. There's a bunch of things going on right now. And this is not the only front, right? You got Hohenheim. Well, he's not doing so hot, but you got Ed. Although he's also, you got Al who's not conscious. But Roy doesn't know that. I mean, for me, in this situation, I'm putting my faith in those people. Put your faith in Izumi and her bathroom slippers, if nothing else. Do the good that's in front of you first, you know, and then worry about the rest later, because who knows? Although I suspect that Riza's gonna be okay. I have a feeling it's gonna happen anyway in some in some form. This can't be it for Riza. That would just be so horrifying. Am I getting lured into hope again? I should have learned my lesson from Attack on Titan. But I refuse to be broken. <laughs> I have hope. Left by their parents, they would have all died without my care. I saw to their education. I gave them a reason to keep on living. I infused their very existence with purpose. And also I brainwashed the kindness them. kindness I showed them, they remain grateful to me. And that's just the sort of overconfidence that could get you in trouble. Oh boy, the chess games begin. <laughs> he finished. What? Episode 59, Lost Light. <laughs> oh yeah, we're grateful, all right. Let me show you just how <laughs> Right, he was with them, so Roy was buying time. I knew he wouldn't let Riza die. Let everyone down there loose right now, or that's the end of you. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> nice. Ooh, that's. Yeah. Focus, Mei Chong, focus. There's the fire. Someone quickly, thank you. Stop with the philosopher's stone and help in the fight. I have to get that stone. Don't you dare die. Stay with me, Lieutenant. This is definitely a setup for Mei-chan, because this is the thing that she's wanted more than anything since she was introduced. But she's totally missing it, right? Like she's missing what's going on. She's so singularly focused, so this is a critical moment for her. But she's gonna make the right choice. Key moment. What you gonna do? <laughs> she comes first. There you go. Thank you. I owe you one. Colonel, I'm so sorry. No, don't speak. Just rest now. You understood my signal. <laughs> no sure. more signals. But I'm glad. We've been together long enough. And besides, I know that glare. It means use human transmutation, and I'll shoot you. More code. Everything's a code. Thank you for all of your help. Sure. It was no problem at all. All right. They made it look the easy. <laughs> oh no. Bradley. The worst person to show up. Such a badass move, throwing that knife from that position. Yeah, I mean, like the train survival, we didn't really need this <laughs> explanation. I just, you know, we knew he survived. I have a feeling Bradley's actual death is going to be glorious. Knowing that weakling's heart of yours, I thought if someone dear to you fell, he would do anything to save her, even if it meant human transmutation. There was a time when I might have. But that time is behind me. We'll never really know for sure though, will we? I mean, he's saying that and it's easy to believe him, but he didn't have to really confront that choice head on because he had other alternatives. There were people, you know, on his side. And here I was under the impression you were all pathetic creatures who could never <laughs> learn a lesson properly. How do you but really feel? there are those like you who can learn, who can change, 
That's one more reason why I can't stand you humans. <laughs> what? It infuriates me when I can't predict how you'll behave. Mm-hmm. Oh no, it's it's pride. This is bad. This is really bad. This is why you don't leave Salim alone. And you thought that Kimberly Pride was a, a good duo. Now we got Wrath Pride. Although, I don't know, I feel like there might be conflict there too. There he is. Look at his cute little shorts. <laughs> I don't think Roy can handle Bradley. Yeah, I mean, even if you he, guess he's weakened. Oh my god. How do you get out of this? Very good. Job well done, Bradley. That's the kind of man I brought you up to be. Yeah. Good riddance. Not sad. No moment of silence card for this guy. Oh, they're like force sacrificing him. Yeah, so he couldn't handle them. There was no handling them. It's beginning. The eclipse. It's like the eclipse has begun. Pride has just assimilated an alchemist who possesses knowledge of human transmutation. <gasps> That's right. I wonder what will be taken from you in exchange, Mustang. I'm wondering the same thing. Yeah, I feel like it was always going to happen. And part of me is excited that it's happening. You know, among the choices for the ending, right? One option is that Father's plan just completely falls apart immediately. More interesting is that Father's plan actually comes together and they're forced to confront whatever that is. But who's going to be transmuted and what is Roy going to lose is the question. Oh, it's the doctor. Welcome, Roy. <laughs> Colonel! Now we're all here, and what's next? All metal? Where... where are we? He seems alright. What did he lose? The bearded guy's hideout. Now what happened? What did they do to you? I was flung into a strange place, into a gateway of some sort. The I'm familiar. Yeah, I've been there. Something was taken from you, but your arms and legs are still here. Full metal. I don't know how you can expect to see my condition when it's this dark in here. <gasps> he lost his vision. It's all dark, pitch black. It's crazy considering he was going after Envy's eyes just a few the episodes lights. ago. Where are the lights? We've found your abilities to be quite problematic in the past. You're by far the most troublesome of the state alchemists we've dealt with. I think it's fair to say you've had this coming. He's falling apart. You performed it? Human transmutation? She was forced into it somehow. Of course not. That's true, he didn't. We had to force him to open the portal. Somehow. The truth can be such a cruel thing. The two brothers who wanted to feel their mother's warmth once more. Their attempt to bring the dead back to life cost one of them the leg on which he stood, as well as the only family he had left. The other lost his entire body to have it replaced by a suit of armor that could feel nothing. The woman who sought to bring back her only baby was given a body that would never again bear children. And then, the man who looked to change his nation had his eyesight taken from him, and now he can no longer see his future. Humans who would dare to play God must pay a steep price for their arrogance. That is the way of the universe, the natural order imposed by the very thing you claim to worship. Something tells me that Father is going to pay a price for his arrogance as well. He's ultimately more human than he would like to admit. That is truth. I don't think so! If he'd done it of his own volition like we did, that would be one thing. But... To force someone to participate in human transmutation against his will, and then steal his eyesight? You think that's justified? 
That isn't a truth I'm willing to accept! I feel like there's so much to that conversation, but I'm not 100% sure what to make of it. Father is saying that it's their pursuit of the truth that costs them these things, and that is just the nature of the universe. And Ed's response to that is acceptance, except for Roy Mustang, who he rejects because it wasn't Roy Mustang's willing choice. The best I can do now is going back to something I've been thinking about and talking about a lot in recent episodes, which is the fact that a lot of the principal characters are already deeply connected to some kind of truth in the way that they live. Most of them have deeply rooted beliefs, you know, that they have some kind of pure connection to, that that guides their actions and they all have some kind of understanding right and they play these ideas out into the world at great personal expense you know I think Ed is a great example of that because he believes so strongly in his ideals about you know the treatment of other people and doing the right thing that he actually is truly willing to sacrifice his own life rather than break his own values and so he pays a cost for that but it's a cost he understands and again this is a huge reach but like there is always a cost for having values like that there is a sacrificial element of looking for truth things do have to die like parts of yourself and your beliefs have to die, kind of. You don't get something for nothing. There's a personal cost. And so I understand why Ed's reaction to that would be about how their treatment of Mustang was wrong, rather than taking issue with anything else Father said. I feel like that's super incomplete though, and I'm missing something. So I'm gonna have to wait and see more of their conversation. You plan to interfere with Father's plans? Scar versus Bradley. I mean, Bradley is very weak. Tell me, you go by Scar. What's your real name? We don't share that. None. I left it. This is kind of a destined fight. You don't say. What a coincidence. I don't know my real name either. It's almost poetic. Interesting parallel. Nameless man fighting yeah. to the death. You can see how much Scar's changed. I mean, look how Kami is, considering he's, you know, fighting the guy who led the war. He's the one who's behind all of this. Yeah. Oh, Alphonse, what happened to you? I don't know. I can't get him to wake up. Oh no! Please wake up, Alphonse! Come on, you have to. He got stuck in the the portal somehow. Come on, Alphonse, get up! Something to do with his body. There he is. Yeah, this is insane. After all this time. But it's not going to be this easy, is it? I've waited a long time. I'm afraid to trust it. Welcome home, Al. Your arms. You've grown so thin. Nothing but skin and bones. It's all you can do just to stand up. I can't. I can't. I can't fight in a body like this. But everyone else is fighting. Oh, no. No, I'll just do it. For a long, long time, all I've thought about is getting my body back. And yet, I can't come back to you. I just can't right now. That body isn't strong enough. You want to go back there? You want to go back in that body? Ugh. For once, I just wish I would be a little bit selfish. <laughs> just take it. Take the body. Everybody would want him to do this. Like, literally everybody would be okay with him doing it. Like, I'm sure so many people would be willing to die to have Al have his body back. But that's a major theme recently, I guess, with the characters, right? It's like, everybody's willing to sacrifice for each other. And nobody wants the other people to sacrifice for them, but that actually works. Like, the whole thing works. Because everyone is shouldering the greatest possible burden they can shoulder. And so that cumulative effect is what makes them so strong and what gives them so much ability as, as people and as a group. We've seen that again and again recently, you know, with people going above and beyond and willing to completely disregard their own desires or well-being for the sake of the values that they've chosen and the people they aspire to be. It's a heroic thing, but I just love Al and I, w I want him to have his body back. But I guess, you know, like I said with the whole Riza decision, you make the best choice you see at the time and you just have faith in the future. I guess that's, that's that. Then I won't stop you. 
Body Owl might want it more than Soul Owl. I'm sorry. I'll be back. And I'll bring I you some clothes. I swear I'll be back. I promise. He looks skeptical. And I really, I really want to believe that that's true. he had searched for for so long to go and help his friends my valiant noble soul as your vessel I am very proud of you but with your selfless return the world may be plunged into darkness and despair my Alphonse and now all five are here so what does he mean by that? Why is him leaving the body behind significant for the future of the world? How will they be plunged into despair? It seems like we're getting close, really close to, I mean, the end, I guess, and by extension, the answers to all these questions. I mean, all the pieces are assembled, as Father said. So the ritual or whatever it is begins, and I guess we, you know, we find out what Father wants. These few episodes have been painful for me, just because there's so many difficult choices the characters are being forced into. And I want so badly for Al to have just taken his body there. And then the craziness of Roy being forced to do human transmutation and losing his eyesight. I guess the the only positive is that Riza's alive. That's good. Also positive, even though it's a very small moment, is I really get good feelings from Scar in this episode in the fight against Bradley. Scar has had one of the most dramatic character arcs, you know, from where he started to now. He feels like one of the most stable and healthy oddly. In the fight against Bradley, he just seemed determined. You know, he didn't seem rage-fueled or out of control or anything like that. And now I'm left with a bunch of questions. Like, what was Body Owl talking about? And also, what happened to Pride? Like, he was flaking off a bit there. He may have lost something in the exchange as well. And what Father is actually saying about truth and what it means for us thematically. All that said, I mean, it's incredibly engrossing. It's so crazy how this finale so far, the way it's made my emotions fluctuate between feeling victorious and feeling just crushed. I'm in this state of anxiety because I don't actually fully trust that things will work out. I mean, I know that overall they'll work out and there will be a satisfying conclusion, but I feel like this whole show is centered around like costs, right? And there already have been so many and things look so bleak. I'm genuinely terrified for the characters going into this. So I just feel on edge watching this set of episodes. And unfortunately for me, I can't watch any more. So I just gotta wait and sit with this feeling. But anyway, I'll see you next time. <laughs> when we turn the corner and everything gets better.